Yeah, no, you don't do that. This? <laughs> Hi, I'm Scotty James, professional snowboarder, and this is The Breakdown. This is Cloud Nine. I have not seen this movie before, but it's got some good half-pipe snowboarding in it, so maybe I'll learn a thing or two. What up, Summit Valley? It's time to ride. Not great weather to be dropping into. It's a little bit overcast, snowing, which might slow you down a little bit in a competition scenario. Seems a little bit windy. We can usually tell that by the flags on the side of the half pipe, whether it's gusty or if it's consistent wind. You don't want wind in the half pipe because it doesn't help. There's flags at this one as well, and I think it's just, they want everyone to know that it is this spring snowboard challenge. You're dealing with different elements, wind, snow, light flat light is what we call it where the sky is the same color as the ground so you kind of lose vision a little bit of what's happening well i use oakley's which are prism lenses that enhance the contrast in the snow so i don't have that issue but other people have that issue <laughs> <by Oakley. laughs> <laughs> yes i am what about her goggles they're good they're good they're not oakley's <laughs> Of this month's snowboard challenge. We all wear bibs, usually is in the seating of the tour. So if you're number one, you'll have number one. If you're number two, three, four, five, you'll have the number. So we'll have all the sponsors and then it'll have like the, the event. So for example, X Games, Burton US Open, Larks Open. This one looks like it is the spring snowboard challenge. Haven't entered that one myself yet. We have anywhere between eight and nine competitions a season. It starts in Copper Mountain. That's the first World Cup for us. World Cup events are our qualifying series for the Olympics. And then after every season, the World Cup is called the FIS Tour. All the competitions put together, all your points are added up and then you will be crowned number one. You win the Crystal Globe. Basically, you just have to qualify within the top 30 and then you go to the Olympics. Let me pause it here. You're probably not waving to the crowd. You're usually in the moment. What you're doing is pretty risky. We work pretty hard. She's enjoying it. I mean, it's what we're up there for too, so. Now this is what I call fashionably late. Striking some fear into your competitors. Showing up a little bit late, bit carefree. Everyone thinking, oh my God, she doesn't care. We're screwed. I haven't done that myself yet, but maybe I will. This coach looks pissed. She's about to deliver something that he does not want to receive. Let's see what happens. Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure what the, uh, whether they're trying to say that's like a trick, but I would say it's a pose. She's doing it again. Whoa, she did it again. <laughs> She's actually like riding the pipe well. She's getting enough speed to get out of the half pipe and do her tricks. Half pipe events like this is judged off. Amplitude is how high you get above the coping. Execution is how you grabbed, how long you held the grab, how you landed in the wall, if you landed in the transition, how you came out of the trick, whether you maintain speed. And then overall impression is based on how you place your tricks in your run. So if you started with the hardest trick, then you're gonna get a high overall impression score and then work your way down after that. So far, she hasn't done any tricks in my opinion. The impression score is, is zero right now, but her execution in her, whatever she's doing is pretty good. She's maintaining speed, riding the half pipe well. Oh, tail grab. That's a trick. It's the first one of the run. I don't actually know where that half pipe is. Usually I can pick where a half pipe is, but now that's just wrong. Because we don't get scored by sevens, eights, sixes, and tens. We get scored out of a hundred. I wouldn't have even thrown my cardboard clip up if I'm honest. No, I'm just kidding, that's mean. I would say that score, seven, seven, eight, seven, eight. You might be making finals in that. Highest score I've ever got was it was either a ninety-seven or a ninety-eight. And the guy that beat me got a ninety-nine or something like that. Hate him. Nah, he's all right. This is A View to Kill. Big James Bond fan. I like yeah. Goldeneye. I used to play the game on Nintendo 64, like, religiously. Interesting first scene where they're coming in where the icebergs are. I'm not sure you'd particularly snowboard there. It's like a bunny slope. Guessing they're in Russia. Uh, Beacon basically is if I've 
been buried in an avalanche. I have my beacon on and the people above will use their beacons to kind of search for me and everyone uses them when you go ride backcountry. I'm not sure how that guy would be buried where he is as it seems like it's a crevasse and I can just tell by the snow that there definitely wasn't an avalanche. It looks like a sun-baked surface. Whereas an avalanche, you can tell it looks like snow has tumbled down the hill. I haven't been in the backcountry a lot, but uh, so I do a half pipe is my discipline. You don't get any avalanches in the half pipe. You're pretty safe there. I'm not sure you would jump into a crevasse like that, if I'm honest. Generally, a crevasse is full of ice and you won't be coming back up if you go down. Maybe if you're being shot at, you might try, but in this case, I mean, he's got snow down there, so he's been able to ski out, but uh, he's really proving me wrong with this whole crevasse skiing thing. He's doing it quite well. That's an outfit that you would probably see walking down the street of Aspen. Not my taste, personally. I mean, James Bond pulls it off, so. James Bond is using a ski of the snowmobile which has just blown up as a snowboard. It might be like an old Burton snowboard. So the nose was always longer than the tail. And you can see that in this shot. Form, you would still see that on a Saturday, Sunday up at any resort. Using his arms a lot, kind of looks like he's dancing. He's doing it with style. We call this the rudder arm. Some people have a really high rudder arm. Some have a pretty low one. Mine sits just kind of happy medium right in the middle. Landing wasn't great. I would give it about a zero in execution, but let's cut him some slack here. He did jump from about 20 feet. His poor joints would have felt the wrath. Successful landing looks effortless. Funnily enough, there is an actual old saying after bang. So you would do a trick and if you felt pretty good about it, each individual would have their own way of expressing how that felt. You see some guys kind of land with their head down and really try and emphasize that effortless approach. I don't have any after bang, or at least I don't think so. You might have to ask someone else. Skiers would probably outrun a snowboarder if you're talking about racing down a hill. Depends how badly you want to get away from the skiers and if you're getting chased down by guns, you probably want to get away pretty quick. There is science behind it, there's more edges, there's less friction on the snow on skis. Snowboards are about this wide and skis are about this wide. That is actually possible. I've seen that done. I've done that myself. I would actually say it's probably easier to pond skim on a snowboard too. The skis are a little bit more out of control, hence them crashing and him getting across. Skiers versus snowboarders, we get along, but we definitely do give each other a bit of crap here and there. We all respect what we do. We're all up there to do the same thing, which is have a good time. Up next, Triple X. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorites growing up. Vin Diesel. I remember watching this the first time in a cinema in Australia with my dad. It was my dad's Christmas party and he took everyone. And at the time I was already snowboarding, so I was probably a little kid going, that didn't happen. So I'm about to do it again. It's a real snowboard, it's got a side cut. I don't know what snowboard it is. Typically if I see a snowboard, I know where, it, like what brand it is or what company's made it for sure. Oh, cue the rock music. So snowboarder, Vin Diesel can do everything. Now, if you can see the base of the snowboard, I can tell you what it is. Mmm, I don't know what that is. This is actually real, people do this. Like put a snowboard on and like do some aerial tricks. It looks like the board that he strapped into in the plane is not the board that he has on his legs here because the, the direction of his feet have changed. I'm gonna freeze this frame. You can see in that shot there, his heel is lifted up on his back foot. You don't do that snowboarding. It's lost the side cut, so they've gone and taken the graphic of the actual snowboard, which is believable, fooled me, and put it on top of like a skydiving board. It's got to be dizzy at this point, surely. It's making me dizzy. All right, here we go, the big stunt. So you can actually see there was one frame where the guy was on skis. If you play it, stop. Right here, that, that shot back there, he's facing forward. You wouldn't do that on a snowboard. So I'm skeptical of that shot. <laughs> that looks like there's quite a bit of powder on the mountain. The best powder in the world is like super light snow, so quite cold and dry temperatures, which is what you'll typically find in like big mountains and steeper terrain like this. That was more of like cut back surfing turn with his hand dragging back here and he's like, you don't typically do that, unless you're really frothing out. 
oh now he's trying to slow down. That's not how you slow down. You just kind of get on your backside edge and just slow down. I mean, he is coming down some pretty crazy terrain, so maybe you would do that. That's that's definitely a 90s outfit. This movie's two th early 2000s, I think, right? He's a bit outdated here. We have goggles. Oakley's were out by then. Oh, man. Yeah, you don't do that. Oh. No chance. That definitely didn't happen. So he's just pulled off two of the biggest jumps I've ever seen on a snowboard and we didn't see him land the first one. So not sure what happened there. Maybe the explosion kicked him into another jump. Oh, and he set off an avalanche. That's a big one. Oh yeah, no. He would not make it out of an avalanche that big. I don't care how good a snowboarder or how bold your head is like Vin Diesel, you're not fast enough to get your way out of that avalanche. It's just not happening. That actually looks like a pretty legit avalanche. His bombs didn't even trigger that off. It was just him stomping his landing. A stomp is when you like execute your trick. So you land on your feet and you stomped it. You could definitely set that up. Jump onto a house and jump off a house. I'm not sure if that one was real. Vin Diesel's still managing to stay ahead of it. Unbelievable. I haven't seen many big avalanches myself, not being in the backcountry all that much, but I heard it's pretty terrifying when you see it properly in real life. And I've seen videos of big ones, not that big. That's why I'm saying that they just wouldn't survive. But I've heard one like break and it like makes a big thudding noise. And what he did at the start, throwing the bombs, they actually do that on like any mountain, just they bomb it so it's safe for the public to go and ride. What's he got? Oh yeah. I've never seen someone jump up and grab something. I've seen people set up jumps into like big pine trees and they'll just go land in the pine tree. But never a uh, radio or telephone tower like Vin Diesel just did. The, the telephone tower wouldn't have survived that avalanche. It would have definitely tipped over with Vin Diesel going under the snow too. Up next, last holiday. Yeah, that's it, that's great. She's got a lot of control, this girl, for not having any control at all. But yeah, you see people lose control all the time. And I lose control sometimes too, so I'm guilty. <sighs> she should have taken out the skiers she missed. <laughs> got quite good technique turning for being out of control. She's like doing this to act like she's out of control, but torso down, she's in control. I mean, she just did a backside turn right there and then she just did a frontside turn again. Backside turn is when you're on your heel edge. Frontside turn is when your toe edge, so the toes of your feet are into the snow. Enjoying yourself. Not really. If she's out of control like this movie's trying to convince us, she's probably not having a nice little chat with this gentleman that's trying to save her. Snowboarding through the trees all the time, every day. Definitely more, more dangerous. You're wrestling with some good pine timber, so if you hit it, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, that's pretty typical. If you want to get into freestyle, they'll make smaller jumps in like a freestyle park at the local resort and you just kind of start jumping like that. And when you want to hit rails, they'll make these things called boxes, which is kind of like this remote where there's a lot more surface area so you can't fall off it. You kind of just slide on the top. Pretty good for being out of control. And for the guy that's supposed to be saving her and in control, he's uh, not doing so well. They flipped it on us. This is Johnny Tsunami, the classic. I think their lingo in this is pretty spot on. What you did yesterday, getting massive air off that jump to help Sam and that Sky Girl, mad props, dude. You're a real charger. Oh, thanks, brah. We don't really say brah. I wouldn't be like, oh, that was gnarly, brah. I might say that was gnarly, but I'm in denial that I do, but I know that I do say that a lot. I say it's gnarly. It's part of the culture. I try to use minimal amounts because you can get pigeonholed too much. I've done like a commercial and they've tried to get me to say like something just completely ridiculous that I would never even say. Gnarly, hectic, sick, dude, awesome, crazy, rad. All in one sentence. And I was like, we don't say that. Sis, now you're cool enough. Those hats are definitely not cool. I'm just gonna stop it there. Those things are hideous. Crazy hats, no one wears those. Can we get busted for that? Hey, only if they catch us. 
Classic snowboarders breaking the rules. Yeah, the misfits. It's like kind of like almost what snowboarding was founded on. It wasn't accepted at the start. You had to go and find your own way. You had to go and ride the mountain where and not tell people. It's definitely legit. Go big, go home. Go big, go home. It's a very cliche line. Come on, man, go big, go home. Just go big. You don't, don't need to go home after. Like this stuff is actually pretty, wow, that looks enjoyable to me. Minus the hat. The terrain, the guys he's got with him, with his friends up riding the mountain. Let me stop it here. Like I was saying before with my snowboarding, why that happened to that guy is he was heavy on his front foot, so his nose dug into the snow. We would call it a rag doll. All your stuff's flying and your arms going all different directions. Snowboarding was definitely banned. I know still to date that there are resorts in America that don't allow snowboarding. This is Point Break. There were actually some real snowboarders in this but they weren't snowboarding. They were just like hanging out at the house, throwing down with him. And it was Yuri Podlajikov, Christian Huller, and I think uh, Louis Vito was in it, but they weren't up riding the terrains. Well, we went to the premiere, the movie just came out and everyone on tour went to the cinema and we watched this movie because a couple of the guys were in it. Just called heliboarding. You get in a helicopter, you have your backpack on, you'll have like your beacon, probe, shovel, all that stuff in your backpack in case an avalanche happens. The reason why it's so unique is because no one typically gets to go there. So the snow's really good. It's cool to go in a helicopter and go snowboarding. You wouldn't go over the side that they're going on. You'd go down this side, probably. The other side's a freaking cliff face at one side, is <laughs> I mean, Travis Rice would probably make his way through that, if I'm honest. Or any other really good backcountry riders would probably be able to navigate it. I probably wouldn't do it. The reason why that isn't really believable is it doesn't look that enjoyable. You're kind of dodging rocks. Typically, if you're dodging rocks going down, you're picking up a lot of speed, which is probably not that safe because you're not going to be able to slow down if you hit a big cliff face, which is what happens. But they're gnarly, so of course they're going to go. Most of this snowboarding footage actually looks like they've actually gone snowboarding, so there would actually be someone skiing down the mountain with them while they're turning and doing all their jumps and stuff. Follow cam's typically a skier, it's just better with uh, stability with the camera, it's easier to move around and manoeuvre. Yeah, we uh, filmed a lot growing up. My brother, Sean, who actually still films me to date, he travels around the world with me. I remember my brother filmed my first ever backflip and we didn't tell my parents what we were up to. We just went and built some super mediocre jump and it was probably actually, now I think about it, super dangerous, but Sean caught it on film. Nowadays, he uses like a, a GoPro and actually follows me down the half pipe and it looks awesome. But back then it was just more like this with like a recording tape and he'd just press the button and he'd yell at me and be like that. Have to start somewhere with a old tape recorder. We used to steal dad's cameras. My dad's a graphic designer so he's had cameras and we used to just take his cameras out telling him and go and use them. Thanks dad. Let me jump ahead. You wouldn't all drop in at once like that because in the case an avalanche does happen, everyone's going in the avalanche. So there won't be someone above the surface to look for anyone. So you wouldn't ride down like this all together, just hee hee, having fun. Because if something happens, no one's gonna be there to look for you, so. If you're going heli skiing or being dropped off at the top of a mountain in a helicopter, I would assume that you would know what you're doing, but you'd be surprised. I'm sure there's people that want to do it for the idea of it, but can't actually get down. <laughs> oh, the big jump. I don't know what's under it. It's hard to tell like how crazy it is, but it doesn't even look enjoyable what you just did. So I don't know why you would do it, but the steeper and the deeper and the scarier the terrain, it's what makes some snowboarders separate themselves from others. They're willing to take that risk. Dropping into a crazy line like that, these three guys didn't think it was possible and that happens with tricks all the time. You go up and in training scenarios, sometimes it's better to have someone else there that's gonna push you and push your buttons to get the best out of you and if I'm nudging someone to do it. I'll just tell them that the old them would have done it and they always do it. This is Chalet Girl. She looks like she doesn't know what the snowboard boots are. Intrigued though, as we all were at, uh, at first when we begin snowboarding. 
questionable one-piece suit. I actually don't mind them because it makes sense. You're not gonna get snow in your butt. Terrible feeling, I'm sure if anyone's been snowboarding or skiing, they know what I mean. That's not gonna happen to her. It's a good place to start, especially if you're learning. I'm a mittens guy. I don't like gloves, like finger gloves. I like mittens, it's warmer. Not sure I'd wear a beanie that says ski on it when I snowboard either. When you're learning, some people prefer to get up that way, some like to get up forward, but you're probably in more control getting up the way that she's doing it there. Uh-oh, that happens on a daily basis on the mountains. Hasn't happened to me, but I'm sure it does. But the guy just so happens to be so handsome. Lucky her. He's riding a Libtech and the Magnatraction Edge is what we call it. So the edge isn't straight on his board, it's actually wavy. The toughest thing to start snowboarding is the amount of time that you spend on your butt. That's what people probably hate about it most. Like skiing, you've probably been able to stand up more, you're not on the ground as much. We don't learn how to walk sideways like that. And that's what skiing is. You can see where you're going, whereas snowboarding is, it's awkward. But once you do it and you get the hang of turning and things like that, it's a lot of fun. Let's go back. Hang outside on the rip side. That wasn't very nice of him just to uh, scoot off like that, considering he almost just knocked her out. I don't know why people hop like that to like get to where they're going or like to get the right direction on their board. Be like me, like trying to hop this seat. You wouldn't typically drag the snowboard from the nose up the hill. It looks like it weighs a ton the way she's carrying it right now, but it only weighs like maybe two kilos. Strapping into the snowboard can actually be pretty difficult to start. I had my dad do it when I was growing up. Couldn't strap in myself. And you can get snow on the bottom of your boots, which then goes into your bindings, and it's like this whole thing, which is not very nice. Yeah, she might need to go to ski school or something, I think. She's struggling a bit. <laughs> That was believable for sure. Like day one snowboarding. For me, I was too young to remember my first day of snowboarding. I was three years old, so I don't remember how I started. But from what I've seen, pretty much what happens. You roll around, you get a sore butt, wrists get sore, maybe you get frustrated. She didn't get snow in her pants because she's wearing a onesie, so. Maybe if you're gonna start snowboarding, I would suggest you get a onesie. But yeah, a lot of kids start skiing first just because it's a good introduction. Doing pizza and like getting your feel on the snow is typically like through skiing. The story told as to why I started snowboarding was I wasn't a very obedient kid. I didn't listen to my ski instructors at all. So the reason they put me on a snowboard was to slow me down so I would listen. And I believe it worked until I figured it out. And then I was off. That was my breakdown. Thanks for watching.